Wisconsin Broadcasters Association Hall of Famer Bob Baer ruled Milwaukee's airwaves in the 60s and 70s. He spoke with countless musicians and celebrities over the years. Bob collected remarkable recordings of these encounters, which he's now sharing with the public. Here's Bob. I sat down in a Fisher hotel room with Peter Noon and Herman's Hermits. Peter explained how they got their group name and surprised me with the name of his favorite recording artists. Lead guitarist Derek Leckenby shared his thoughts on some of their recordings. We'll hear a couple of crazy voice tracks and some sound from their July 1965 concert at the Milwaukee Auditorium. From Peter Noon to Herman and the Hermits, how did you arrive at that name? From the Bill Winkle Show. Yeah, the Bill Winkle Show on television. It's a TV that called Sherman. And um, we were looking for a name and we saw the Sherman character come on. So we went, Sherman, yeah, let's call ourselves Herman and the Hermits. So we did. Who's your favorite artist? I like Beatles, especially. I like Elvis Prestwood. And, um, you know, I like lots and lots of it. I haven't got any really number one favorites except the Beatles, you know. And then after that, everyone else is sort of just, you know, like a popular in my mind. How much time do you spend in the recording studio? Well, some, you know, we, we never have a, a set time to record here. Sometimes we've been in the recording for 24 hours at a time, you know, doing albums. And other times we've been in for 20 minutes and got a record name, you know. Like, our latest one just a little bit better, you know, it's got, we put these bells on it. And I kept donging the bell at the wrong time. So we cut it out in the end. It, it, it just dongs in a few places, you know. Herman Service. They're uh, from Manchester, England. As you all know, they've had over 23 hit singles, of which five went gold, ten hit uh, hit albums. They had two major motion picture scores, including When the Boys Meet the Girls and Hold On, and record sales in excess of $40 million. Now everybody wants to know, why in the world is Derek even working <laughs> when they got all that money? Oh, well, there you go. What, what is the story behind uh, Peter Noon leaving the group, Derek? What's the story? Yeah, why Why did he leave? No real story. He just wanted to leave. I mean, going back, you know. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to. Be, he just wanted to be an actor, basically. He wanted to be a singer, songwriter, actor type. Uh, you know, thing. he didn't want to be in a band anymore. Mm -hmm. That was basically it. And he said he'd been like that for a year or so, and he said he wanted to leave. So he said, well, go ahead and leave. So he did. <laughs> Tell us the story behind some of your successful hits. Like Mrs. Brown, you got a lovely daughter. How'd that come about? Well, that was, that was quite by accident, really. It wasn't as uh, it wasn't a planned thing. It was that we were making our first album, going back now 23 years. It was 1964, and uh, in the late summer, and we were making our album. And our album, first album, really consisted of our stage set. That's all the songs we knew, and so we set those down the album. And, the la and we came to number 12. Mickey says, Mickey, our producer said, uh, we need a 12th song. I said, well, we do this one that we goof around with on stage just for a joke. He says, well, how does it go? So we played it. He said, okay, that's good. I said, shall we do it? He said, have we done it? He'd taken it while we were playing it. And, <laughs> and uh, the whole album only took us uh, three hours in the afternoon to make. And uh, it came over here. It came out over here with introducing him and Hermits. And then uh, what happened then was the uh, the disc jockeys over here liked the song so much, Mrs. Brown, they, took it, uh, they forced MGM to make it into a single. And we were off and running on a different course. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Because we didn't really, we didn't really, that wasn't typical of what we did. We didn't do all that musical type material. That was just like a little thing that we just threw in as a, as a sideline, as a joke. We were basically just a straight pop band. You know, we were doing the, uh, the harmony stuff, the uh, silhouettes, can't hear my heartbeat, and it's something good, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That was basically what we did. And um, the other thing came as a little a surprise. How about the song Henry VIII? Well, that came as a direct, we, did, we directly followed uh, up. Mrs. Brown with it. We said, well, if the, if the people like in the States like us to do this kind of in, really English sounding thing, we'll, we'll do a few more odd songs to go along with it, you know, to keep in that mold as well. So we ended up with two sides of us, really, and we, and we deliberately planned to do Henry VIII as a follow-up of, of the same kind of material. And uh, again, that, that only took us like a three minutes to make. It took us actually about an hour to put the little tag on the end, you know, and it goes doodle 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 <laughs> it took us, we had to edit that on because we were laughing so much. It was it's an old spoof jazz ending, you know, that we'd, we'd used to hear all the trad jazz bands were doing. And we thought we'd stick that on the end of uh, Henry because it sounded like it fitted. Him. But we couldn't do it in one take. We kept laughing, you know. Now, who wrote those uh, songs? Oh, 
Well, Mrs. Brown was written by a, a fella cook. Um, ooh, I think now. Trevor Peacock, his name was. But that wasn't written very long time ago. That was only written like a couple of years before we did it. It was written for a musical. I see. Um, a modern, well, at the time it was a modern musical. It was called The Boys. Actually, it had to be a play that had a couple of songs. And it wasn't really a musical. And uh, Tom Courtney was the star of the play. And he actually recorded it first. He recorded it in 1963, I think, or two, 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 two or three. And it never, it never charted or anything. Yeah, right. And that's where we'd heard it. We'd heard the record by Tom Courtney, and we, we sort of incorporated it in our show. Uh, Henry VIII was much older than that was written in the 20s. Hmm. I mean, that was uh, a big hit in England around about 1922 or something like that. Hello, this is Derek Leckenby of Herman Hermits. Hi, this is Keith Hopwood with Herman's Hermits, listening to the Bob Barry Show. Hello, this is Lex here of Herman and the Hermits. Hi, I'm Carl Green from Herman's Hermits. Hello, this is Herman of Herman's Hermits. Happy to entertain you on Milwaukee's number one radio sound, the Bob Barry Show. <coughs> that was a genuine Herman snore. Hi, this is Barry Whitman with Herman Hermit. Here's one of our memory makers on the Bob Barry Show. <coughs> Thank you for listening to Bob Berry's Unearthed Interviews. Be sure to subscribe and rate our podcast on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts. You can find all the episodes at wisconsinbroadcastingmuseum.org. Check out Bob Berry's book, Rock and Roll Radio Milwaukee. Book sale proceeds support Angels Kids Fund and Donate Life Wisconsin. The preceding program was made possible by a generous contribution from Terry Bond.